In this video, we're going to be talking about another quota method called Lanza's method. Lanza's method is also sometimes referred to as the method of largest relative fractions, and we're going to talk later more about what we mean by largest relative fractions. Some history about it, it was invented by William Lowndes, who lived from 1782 to 1822, a congressman from South Carolina. It was proposed as a method of apportionment that would be more favorable to small states. At the time, South Carolina was a small state. It has never been used to apportion Congress. Now let's talk about what relative fractional parts are, or what they mean when they refer to Lowndes' method as the method of largest relative fractions. The relative fractional part, which you'll see abbreviated sometimes as RFP, of a number is the decimal part of the number divided by the whole part of the number. So let's look at an example. We want to find the relative fractional part of 14.3734. What we would do here is take the decimal part of the number, 0.3734, and divide that by the whole part of the number, or 14 in this case. Okay, so we divide this and we end up getting 0.02667 as our answer. It's important to remember that with relative fractional parts, you always round them to five decimal places. That's because when we're comparing them, sometimes they can be very close to each other and you may need the extra decimal in order to decide which one is larger than the other. Now let's look at another example. Find the relative fractional part of 5.2234. So I'd say pause the video here, try to find it yourself, then hit play to see if you did it correctly. So the relative fractional part here we take the decimal part of the number, 0.2234, and remember to include the decimal. One mistake people often make is they forget to include this decimal. So we divide that by 5, and we get 0 0.04468. Now that we know what relative fractional parts are, we can talk about how to apportion using Lowndes' method. First, you would follow steps 1 to 4 of Hamilton's method, that's in the last video. Next, you would calculate the relative fractional part for each state using their state quota. Step 3, you would assign any unallocated seats to the states with the largest relative fractional parts until no seats are left. Now there is one special case we need to talk about. I believe this comes up in one of your homework problems. If in step two, you would end up having to divide by zero, something that is never allowed in any part of the universe ever, consider the state to have a relative fractional part of infinity. They will be the first state to get an extra seat in step three. So let's say you have a quota that's something like 0 0.2341, which can happen sometimes, and you try to find your relative fractional part, you would have to divide by zero, which you can't do. You would just consider this relative fractional part to be equal to infinity, even though this is something that you know normally isn't allowed. That's just the rule we have for when we're using Lowndes' method. So let's look at this example now. Apportion 76 representatives to the following three counties of Delaware using Lowndes' method. If you remember from the Hamilton method video, we did this apportionment using Hamilton's method. Now we'll see what happens if we use Lowndes' method. So here's all of the work we did last time. We found the natural state quotas. This is from the last video. So the first thing that we would do now is go through and find the relative fractional part for each county. So if we look at the natural state quota of Kent, 0.3328, is our decimal, we divide that by 24 to get our relative fractional part of 0 0.01387. And we would do the same thing for the other two counties. Take the decimal part of the number, remember to include the decimal, and divide it by the whole part of the number, and here we have our three relative fractional parts. Now for our initial allocation, we would again look to our natural state quotas and round everything down. So the initial allocation in Lowndes' method and Hamilton's method are exactly the same. So this is going to become 24. 25.3 becomes 25. 26.3 becomes 26. And if we add all of these up, we get 75, which means there's one seat that we have not yet allocated. So we're going to give it to whichever state has the largest relative fractional part. Now if we look at these, some of them are very close. 0. 013, 0 0.013. So these two are very close, but 
0.0138 is slightly larger. This is the largest relative fractional part, so Kent is going to get the extra seat here. Okay, so now for our final allocation, Kent gets an extra seat. The other two counties stay at their initial allocations, and it adds up to 76, which is the correct house size. Now let's look at another example. And again, this is another example we saw in the Hamilton's method video. Now we'll see what happens if we apportion using Lowndes' method. I would suggest pause the video here, try to go through this problem yourself and solve it, and then hit play to see if you did it correctly. So again, remember the first thing that we would need to do here is find the total population in the natural divisor, and then we would use those to calculate our natural state quotas. These are the numbers from the previous video. Now for our initial allocations, we would first get rid of the decimal parts of each state quota. So initially we would have 8, 10, 11, 9, and this all adds up to 38, meaning there are still two seats that we haven't given out yet. Now in order to determine which states get those two extra seats, we need to calculate the relative fractional part for all of them. So for here we would have what, 0.6957 divided by 8, 0.4348 divided by 10, 0.4783 divided by 11, 0.3913 divided by 9, and we end up getting the following relative fractional parts, 0 0.08696, 0 0.04348, 0 0.04381, now notice I took it to six decimal places here, and that's because it's almost exactly the same as this one. And the next one is 0 0.043478, which I also took an extra decimal place because if we notice these three relative fractional parts are all very close to each other. So now for our final allocation, we need to see which two states have the largest relative fractional parts, and they're going to be the ones that get the extra seats. So first, our largest relative fractional part is over here, 0 0.08. So they're going to go from 8 seats to 9 seats. And now we need to find our next largest one, 0 0.0434, 0 0.0434, 0 0.0434. 0 okay, um, our larger one is going to be here, 0 0.043481. And it's that one over there that makes a difference. So this state will go from 11 seats to 12 seats. Uh, that will stay at 10, and yeah, Centra will stay at 9, and all of this adds up to 40, which is the correct house size. Now let's look at another example. Apportion 15 representatives to the states shown in the table below based on population using Lowndes' method. Okay, so here we don't have anything pre-filled. We haven't done this example before using another method, so I would suggest pause the video here, try to go through everything from the beginning, and then hit play to see if you did it correctly. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is identify our house size. Our house size is 15, and then we need to find our total population. If we add up everything here, our total population is going to be 1,181, and then we need to find our natural divisor. That's equal to 78.7333. The next thing we need to do is find our natural state quotas. And in order to do that, we divide each state population by our natural divisor. And so we find the following state natural quotas for each state. Now, everything that we've done so far up until this point is not unique to any particular method. This is the first couple of steps that you have to do for every single apportionment method we're going to be looking at. Now, the next thing we would do is do our initial allocation based on our state quotas. So we're going to cut off all of the decimals. We have Yarnum gets 3, Hyrule gets 4, Foglin gets 1, and Raccoon City gets 5. We add all of this up, and we end up getting 13. So this tells us there are still two more representatives or two more seats that we need to allocate. 
Now, since we're doing Lowndes' method, the way we're going to figure out which states get the two extra seats, we need to calculate the relative fractional part for each state using the state's quota. So that'll be our next step. And we get the following relative fractional parts. Now you may notice some of these only have four decimal places. That's because if the calculator only gives you four decimal places and doesn't go on, you don't need to round off to you know more than that. Although if we did want to take it to five, all of these would have a zero over here. So we have our relative fractional parts now. We can figure out which states are going to get the two extra seats. So the largest relative fractional part that we have here is 0.2701. So they are definitely going to get an extra seat. So they originally got one, now we'll go to two. And our next largest relative fractional part is over here, 0 0.206. Originally they got four, now they'll get five. And this one stays at three, and that one stays at five. And we add up all of our final allocations, and this comes out to 15, which is the correct house size. So now if you go back to the beginning of the video, and you look at the history part, they said that Lowndes' method was proposed as a method that would help out small states or states with smaller populations. If we look at what happened here, the state with the smallest population, they had a hundred, all of the other states have you know, higher populations in comparison, they ended up getting an extra seat here because they had a larger relative fractional part. If we were to have done this allocation using Hamilton's method, the two largest decimal parts here would have been Hyrule and Raccoon City, and this state that has a lower population would not have ended up getting an extra seat. So we say Hamilton's method generally favors states with larger populations. Lowndes' method generally favors states with smaller populations, but it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But more often than not, Lowndes' method is beneficial to states that have a smaller population.